Hi, I'm Sandra Porter, and today I'd like to share some tips about using the Sequence Viewer at the NCBI. We're going to look at the hemoglobin beta subunit gene. So I'm going to go to the gene database and pick the one from Homo sapiens, otherwise known as humans. So we'd like to know, if we have a gene, how the protein sequences and the mRNA sequences and the gene correspond to each other. So we're going to look now at the map. This section of the gene record, entitled Genomic Regions, Transcripts, and Products, shows us a lot of different maps relative to each other and we can see that there are even some alternate maps that we could look at. Our default set for this gene is from chromosome 11 and it's from the genome reference build number 38. It's important to know which one you're looking at because if we change this selection from the menu then the options in the map and the positions that we see in the map change as well. So it's good, that's a good thing to be aware of. At the top our top track is the messenger RNA, the reference sequence, because it starts with NM, and it's been combined here with the reference sequence for the protein, which starts with NP. So we can always tell if we're looking at a reference sequence. You can see here the reference sequence is NC, so it tells you it's the reference sequence for a contig. Each track here has a different kind of information. The next track is a set of alternative gene models from the Ensemble database. We have, we have SNP data. We have other kinds of variations from clinical samples. We have data that show where molecules of RNA map to the DNA sequence. This shows us where genes are expressed. Today, however, I'd like to focus on the messenger RNA, the gene, and the protein itself. So what I'm going to do is to hide the other tracks by clicking the red X at the top corner. Before we go farther, I'd like to also introduce some of the tools that we use for navigating through the sequence and viewing different kinds of things. We have arrows that we can use to move left or right. We have spy glasses that we can use to zoom in or out. We can also use the slider to zoom. Notice when I've zoomed out I can see where my gene is in relative to the positions of other genes that are located on this chromosome. Now we'll zoom in once more. I can also, there's a, um, a gene tracks button that I can use to turn on a view where I can see where the messenger RNA is and the protein, sequences that correspond to the protein, see those relative to each other. I have some tools that I'm not really going to talk about just yet, and I have some other tools that I can use to add other tracks that you didn't see. So you are viewing the default set of tracks of information when we open this up, but there, there's a whole set of things that we can add. So I'd like to know more about the sequence, so I'm going to open the sequence menu, and from the set of sequence tracks, I'm going to choose six frame translations. And I'm going to click, there's a button you, you can't really see. There we go. I'm going to click the configure button so I save that. All right, so now what I've done is to open the predicted translations from each, from each strand of DNA and I have a personal preference that I actually like to see the genes on top of that. So I'm going to move this tract up a bit so it's above 
the six frame translation set. What I'd like to do now is figure out where the different exons and the protein coding regions start and stop. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to use my cursor here to kind of drag this over so I can see where the first exon begins. Okay. Now the first thing I'd like to know is which reading frame corresponds to this exon. So we have two strands of DNA, as I mentioned before, and there are three reading frames from each one because we could start translation at any one of three bases and we read in groups of three. One strand it's going to be considered plus one, the other strand it's going to be considered minus one. And I can see here that the region of the exon that corresponds to my protein kind of begins about here. Okay? Now, there are some markers within the reading frames that give us some idea about the information we have. A bright green mark is used to show us where methionines are located. Methionines are often the amino acid that is encoded by start codons, or start codons often code for methionine. And the red marks show us where there are stop codons. Okay, so if we compare reading frames with our protein up here, we can see that only one reading frame contains, only one reading frame spans the length of this protein, this part that's coding for protein, and that is reading frame minus three. Okay, now I'd like to know where, where those parts begin and end. I'm going to start with the RNA, so I'm going to zoom down into the RNA now. Okay, and keep zooming. I'm also going to use this button here that's going to let me jump right in to the sequence. So I can see the sequence of the gene up at the top. And you see it has two strands because it's DNA. Okay, and we'll figure out where the RNA starts. So here is our RNA right here at the edge of this purple rectangle. And notice the direction of numbers here. This is going to be different for every gene, but we can see ours. It's starting at 5,227,070, and it goes up here to 5,227,080. And my mRNA starts coding right here at 5,227 and 71 and I can actually see this too if I hold my cursor very steady I can this will appear right here okay so I can see that's where the RNA starts and I can also see where it ends from this information as well now let's figure out where the protein starts I'm going to zoom out just a bit and drag my sequence over a little bit so I can see this a little bit better and then zoom back to the sequence. And I can see the start codon here, ATG, and I can see where that is up here. There's the ATG on the bottom strand. And I can see that the A is going to be at 5,227,021 because it's one base over from this. I can also see that same methionine right here, and I can see that the same amino acid sequence is here in reading frame minus three, as we said a moment ago. Now let's see where that this ends. I'm going to zoom out a bit so I can find the end a little bit easier. Zoom to the sequence. Alright, I can see that 
the end of the sequence in this axon is at a codon that's AGG specifying arginine and I can see that the AGG is here in the strand and so this one is ending at 5,226 929 because it's one base over. All right, let's see where the second codon starts. We'll zoom out and give that give that a try. Okay, there we go. We should also pick which reading frame this is, so let's zoom out a little bit more so we can see which reading frame that's going to be. We can see that the only reading frame that covers the entire exon is reading frame minus one. All right, let's see where this begins and ends. I'm going to zoom in and look at my sequence, drag a little bit, zoom a little more, Okay, I can see that the first amino acid here is a leucine, and the codon is CTG. I can see here, as I said before, that that's in reading frame minus one. Here's the CTG, and the C is at nucleotide 500,226, uh, 798, because it's two back from that position. Now let's zoom out and we'll go to the end. There we go. Okay, so this exon ends at an AGG specifying arginine. I can see it down there. I can see the AGG up at the top. And since this is this last G, this last G is at 5,226,000 577. Let's go further. We'll zoom out a bit to make it easier to get there. So we found the third exon. And I can see that the reading frame that is going to match this one is reading frame minus two. I can see it's over here. And I can also see the stop codon from reading frame minus two stops right at the end of the protein coding sequence, which is great. Now let's zoom in and have a closer look. All right. I can see that exon 3 starts at a leucine. The first codon here is a CTC. I can see where the CTC is located up here, and I can see that the C is going to be at, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be at 5,225,700 and 26, 29, 28, 27, 26 CTC. All right, let's look at the other end. We'll zoom out to make it easier to navigate. Drag this over. First, we're going to see where the protein coding region stops. So you see there's this uh, stop codon right there. And let's figure out what the stop codon is. So I can see that the stop, this uh, last amino acid is encoded by a CAC. So the stop codon is this TAA. All right. And the CAC, so the very end of the exon is actually the A, the second A. So that makes it 5,225,598 for the end of the exon, or end of the, um, end of the stop codon. The end of the protein coding sequence, however, ends with the last codon, 
and that is going to be 5,225,601. It's where this histidine, where the CAC that encodes the histidine ends. All right, one last thing we're going to look for, and that's to figure out where the three prime untranslated region ends. Because this, all this part here of the mRNA is not translated, so it's an untranslated region. So we'll zoom out. And put that kind of in the middle of our screen. And then zoom in and look at the sequence. Okay, and I can see that the RNA ends right here, and that's going to be 5,225, 461, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think, 465. But actually, I can check this, because I believe this is going to be here. Ah, 466. There we go. There are the details from our gene. One other thing you might like to know how to do, not for this assignment, but in the future, is you can also, if you open the Tools menu, go to the Sequence Text View, and you can find your exons here as well. Here's the first exon, the second exon, and the third exon. And that's all for today.